We give the Lord praise. Amen. Amen. I give the Lord thanks for bringing me safely again back to London. Amen. I'd like to greet the household of faith, Elder Gardner and Sister Cutie and the uh, officers and members of the church in the wonderful name of Jesus. We um, want to give God thanks especially for traveling mercies that he has taken me and brought me back. It's an amazing thing. As you know, I'm petrified of flying, but I'm thanking the Lord that I'm back. It's not easy to be flying up there. Always remember, when you're going, avoid seats 21 to 24. That's where the children are. And, and, and make sure, you know, they have seats where all the children cry and make noise. You never can get any sleep. So those seats you should try and avoid. But we are, I am grateful to the Almighty God. I'd like to extend greetings to our visiting sisters at the back. It's good to see you all. And of course, um, it's the first time I'm seeing Sister Camille for a while, so we praise the Lord for her. And it's wonderful to, to see all the brethren. And indeed, Sister Kutu was on holiday as well. It's good to see her again. And we both got a bit of a suntan, but we thank God for that. Amen. <laughs> that means we get our vitamin D minerals in us. We uh, all went to, to, all the Caribbean met up in Antigua uh, for the, at the end uh, of July, the first week in August for the conference. And it was wonderful to see all the brethren there and good to, to make acquaintance with new brethren. The theme of the, the conference was Jesus Now More Than Ever. Do you know that song, Jesus Now More Than Ever? And they, that was the theme. It was re indeed wonderful. Um, it wasn't what they wanted uh, in terms of the building because they had hired a property, a premises, but that somehow uh, didn't work out. So we were back in the old church and they put up a, a tent at the back, at the front, which made it really quite intimate. It was really nice to see people out in the yard uh, covered over with, um, with uh, a, a canopy. And the services was really well attended. And really, even though it rained sometime, everybody was quite happy. Because you know it's like in the Caribbean. It rains and pours down really, really hard. And then within two minutes, you wonder if it did rain. <laughs> Uh, it's such uh, everything dried up. So Pastor Andrews sends his regards for the church, as well as uh, Pastor Dyer. He was here, um, and they all send uh, their their fond uh, love and blessings towards everyone. Um, I want to give God thanks for your prayers. You know, Elder Gardner, we held the fort at as we were uh, I was away, uh, and we. I want to thank you for your calls in your texts, and. Whilst I was there, I linked up with a few of the young people, and we all were on the beach, and we were all different places. Now, I don't get so too jealous, because it was really nice to be on the beach with them. And amazing, some of them didn't even want to, all they wanted to do was talk about the goodness of the Lord. And uh, there's one particular chap who's a cricketer, he's about six foot three. Um, the man held me in a corner, like he didn't want me to go, wanted to talk about his problems. He talked about his problems all day. <laughs> But no, he, was, he really needed to talk, and I'm glad that I was there for him to talk with me. And each and every day we had, um, we had a different country. So uh, on Monday it was, it, it was uh, St. Lucia, on Tuesday it was French Guyana, and they literally French. The conference next year is in French Guyana, and I'm wondering if I should go to French Guyana because they've got lots of snakes there. I don't like snakes. <laughs> and the good thing about Antigua is that, there, that there's mongoose everywhere. And hence, there is no snakes. And the mongoose eat all the snakes. So Antigua is wonderful to be in, knowing that all you see is mongoose running about and no snakes. So next year, it's in French Guyana. And um, that's going to be around about the same time. And it would be nice to go to French Guyana, because I've never been to Guyana, uh, and especially the French part. And everybody there was speaking different languages, French, Patois, in different styles. The only thing that was really good about Antigua is that, they are, that for me, uh, when it comes to the language, was that there are at least 82,500 people there, and 108 thousand square meters is the island if I've got it right and of the 82,500 people there at least 20,000 of them are Jamaicans <laughs> so a lot of Jamaicans in Antigua and uh, it's amazing um, 
to see so many Jamaicans there. Uh, so on, on Wednesday, it was Trinidad and Tobago. On Thursday, it was St. Croix. And every different island took a different day. And it was wonderful how they started. Similar, very similar to us. Praise and worship, uh, uh, specials, testimonies, and then the message. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, and the messengers, it was really beautiful to, to hear so many different speakers every day. And as I said, we are, um, we're all together in one accord, everybody together. And it was wonderful, Jesus now more than ever. Everybody was united. Now, the, my friends and brethren from uh, Tobago, who I know very well, we all were wonderful, fully happy to see one another. And I, I was particularly um, interested uh, when they asked me to, to go up and I, I said who, where, who I am and where I'm from. Um, I, everybody heard I'm from Jamaica originally and I'm from Font Hill, St. Thomas. And as soon as I got down from the platform, there at the stairs was five brethren <laughs> from Font Hill. Uh, they, um, what's, what's the name, Sister Tracy? They're, they're connected with the Willises. Uh, Pete, Pete Wigan, Wigan, Pete, yes. Uh, Sister, Sister Lee knows Pete very well. And he started asking me about Sister Lee, asking about people in England, I told him. And, and Pete was there with other relatives there from, from, from Font Hill. And the first thing he said to me was, there's no Johnson in Font Hill. <laughs> I said, no, that's true. But if you talk about my mom's side of the family, then you'll know. And then when I told him, he says, yes, 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 yes. If you ask, it should be on picnic. <laughs> Miss Liddy picnic. And the thing is, immediately, I realized that they're my cousins. <laughs> I said to him, well, everybody in Font is relative. <laughs> so I'm thanking the Lord that I met. And immediately, I, I had friends, to, uh, close friends and family and we all linked up together. It was really, really a blessing to see them all. And I'll tell you what's good about it, brethren. All of us spoke the same language. What we speak in, in, in Antigua, in the Church of God, Seventh Day, we all speak here. And it was so refreshing to hear everybody speak the same language. From, uh, from, um, from Guadeloupe, Martinique, Barbados, uh, all different islands, some islands I'd never even heard of. Uh, what was that one? Some place, oh, uh, American Virgin Islands. So many brethren there from all over the Caribbean. And it just goes to show, when I saw the history as I traveled around the island, it just goes to show that we're all from the same place. Every one of us, all black people. And it's good to hear the, uh, the, the Antiguans, it, because practically everything we say in Jamaica, the same thing they say. Um, we call Ginep, Ginep, they call Ginep, Ginep. And, and in Trinidad, they call Ginep, what, Chana? Chanet, yes. So it's diff different over in Trinidad, but we all had the same language when it came to worship in the Lord in, at the Church of God's Seventh-day teaching. So I praise the Lord for that. And what was good also is that um, as, I, as I came back, I just give the Lord thanks for, for his blessings. It's, it's wonderful. Um, I, didn't, I thought I had economy tickets, but because I'd booked so often with, the, with Newmont Travel, everybody booked with Newmont Travel, uh, because I booked so often with them, they had upgraded me to um, platinum, to the next, next, next one up. And I had some really good seats, and it's really wonderful. <laughs> And, and I thank the Lord for that. Um, so uh, the, the blessings of the Lord was definitely following me. And I thank the Lord. Met wonderful people. Everybody there was really, really wonderful. Uh, and uh, I was treated very well when I went to the resort to, to, to actually relax and, and on the beach. And I traveled around the island on a boat. Went around the island in a day. It's that small, you know. And then uh, traveled around the island in a car in a day. It was really beautiful. And of course, all the stuff. Went swimming with the stingrays. It's really, really fantastic. <laughs> it's really, really great. Uh, I, I thought I, I was petrified to go, but some of the English couple we all traveled with said to me, go, go, Ken, because it's really, really exciting. And I'm glad I went. So it was really good. And then on the way back, I was coming through. Now, this is me in my holiday gear. Normally, I travel with my suit and tie, yes? 
So uh, nobody ever bothers me. But this time I was coming back with my T-shirt and trousers and, and, and my trainer's shoes and I was walking through customs and the customs man said, come over here. <laughs> so he called me over and he says, where you come from? I says, Antigua. He says, okay, I'd like to have a look in your case. I says, where are, he says, where are they? They're these two. I says, okay, let, let me see your passport first. And uh, this is the blessing of the Lord. I really thank the Lord for his blessing. He says, look, he looked at my passport. You know, he, uh, I took my passport out and I gave him. He opens it, looks at my passport, reads it, looks at me, reads it, looks at me, reads it. Says, um, did you buy any presents? I said, yes. Um, well, let me just see your presents. And I said, oh, open it, open it. Little things I had in my bag. He says, okay, um, you're free to go. I don't need to see your bags. Uh, and then he gave me up my passport. And he turned to his mate and he goes, <laughs> don't know what they were saying. But I could imagine, he thought I was a rude boy. I was in t-shirt and trousers and when he looked at my passport, he looked at me, looked at the passport, looked at me, looked at the passport, gave it back to me and says he doesn't need to see my case. <laughs> I suppose when he saw how old I was, <laughs> he changed his mind. <laughs> and then he must have said to his friend, did you see that black? <laughs> in his passport, <laughs> his age. <laughs> And then compared to, and then he let me go, and he's looking at me real weird. So I thank the Lord for that. I could only think he thought I was a rude boy, but when he saw my age, he thought different. So, uh, but brethren, I, I, I am 60, you know. <laughs> so he, he really thought, and said to me, looked at the man, he looked at his friend, and I says, thank the Lord, I'm going. <laughs> and you know what he said to me? Oh, I'm sorry to have bothered you. I'm sorry to have pulled you over. Please, yes, you go ahead. Thank you for your cooperation. And he said, bye-bye. Don't need to see my case. And then he looked at his mate. <laughs> so I thank the Lord for that. Amen. God is good to all of us in Jesus' name. We thank the Lord for uh, everything. And you know, brethren, it's good to be back. Amen. It's good to be back to see you all. And it's good to be back because I really like it when I land in England. It was so cool. Not so hot as it was in the Caribbean. But to be honest with you, uh, Antigua is not an island that is, is, the sun shines and it's shining in 26, 28, 30. But there's a wonderful breeze blowing everywhere in Antigua. It is so nice and fresh there. Do you know there's 365 beaches in Antigua? And not only that, but the whole of the island's got so many resorts. Their only income is tourism. So basically, when you go there, all tourists are treated very well. And I'd recommend you take a holiday to Antigua. It's absolutely wonderful there. And the people are very friendly and very nice. So Antigua, I would recommend. And it's gl I'm so glad that when I travel and meet such wonderful people, I can come back and be happy to know that I'm back with my people in Jesus' name. And I thank the Lord for all that he has done for me. And I thank him for his grace and his mercy. And I'll tell you what, brethren, I believe that if we follow the principles laid down in the word of God, we should be able to get the best in life. Amen? We should be able to have the best in life. One of the Psalms that I'd like us to have a look at before I begin, it's a wonderful Psalm, Psalm 96. If we can put that up, because I read that over and over again in Antigua whilst I was there. Psalm 96. And I'm praising the Lord for this psalm. Because this is a psalm that I used to look at many years ago, many times. But as you know, sometimes things slip us. This psalm is a wonderful psalm. It says, Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord, all ye earth. Isn't that wonderful? Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders amongst what? All people. Go on. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord 
made the heavens. Praise the Lord. And then it says this. Look at this. This is one of the things I found which is beautiful. Because honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are where? In his sanctuary. What did David said? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go in to the house of the Lord. What's the next verse? Next, verse 6. We've we done 6 already? 7. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindred of the people, give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord. And this is a wonderful verse. This, work, this verse will make you all rich. This will make you rich. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his court. Isn't that wonderful? Bring an offering. My granny used to give me a penny if that's all she had to give uh, you know, but you know, if she gave me more than a penny, you know what these kids used to do? We used to buy some sweets, and then whatever was left, we put in. But we grow, I grow to realize that I should bring an offering when I come into the house of the Lord. Amen. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear him, all the earth. Praise the Lord. Say among uh, the heathen that the Lord reigneth. The world also shall be established, that it shall not be moved. He shall judge the people righteously. Praise the Lord. Let the heavens rejoice, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof. Praise the Lord. Let the field be joyful, and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the woods rejoice. Praise the Lord. Before the Lord before the Lord, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, he shall judge the whole world, the world with righteousness and the people with his truth. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. I, I believe that the Lord is coming back again. He's coming back again and all of us should understand that we should give thanks to God through Jesus Christ who give us us the victory. Let me remind the church today, whatsoever we do, in word or in deed, do it all in the name of Jesus. Giving thanks unto God the Father, Father by him. The main thing we ought to understand is that we're not praying to Jesus. We're not praying to ask Jesus for anything more than to intercede for us. You see, because when we're going through Christ, he is not the one that's going to do it for us. It's God. God the Father will bring us the blessing through Christ. Praise the Lord. Therefore, when we go to the Almighty God, we say, in Jesus' name. So we're asking the Father because we're going through his Son. And because we are not worthy, the Son makes us clean because of his sacrifice on Calvary. And we are so grateful and happy and thankful to the Almighty God for giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So then when we pray, we don't say, Lord Jesus, please help us. We say, God, please help us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. If we get it right, we will have the right answer. So therefore, we don't say, Lord Jesus this, Lord Jesus that, Lord. We must say in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, Father, help us. Amen. Therefore, we can get our prayers directly to God through Jesus Christ by the right and biblical teaching so that when we go down in our knees, we're not saying, Lord Jesus, help us. Lord Jesus, do this. Lord Jesus, do that. Lord Jesus, answer my prayer. That is not the right way to pray. Does that make sense? We've got to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, please answer our prayers. Amen. Some folks are praying today, and they are praying to Jesus. We are praying to Jesus. 
Paul said, whatsoever we do, in word or in deed, do it all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks unto God the Father by him. Amen. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement that we should have received. The beating that we should have received. The smacks and the hits and the whipping that we should have received. He received them instead. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes that he received, we, he received, we are healed. Amen? So therefore, when we pray to the Almighty God, we ought to do it rightly and say, Our Father, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, the great I Am, Jehovah God, Elohim, the I am that I am. We are coming to you, almighty God, not because of the good that we've done, not that we are perfect, but we are coming through the mediation of your only begotten son. His name is Jesus, and in his name we come to you, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who has been made propitiation for our sins. Therefore, when we go through to God in the right way, we can expect an answer. Somebody praise the Lord today. Amen. Sometimes we are praying and we have to stop ourselves. We must stop ourselves. Have you ever been going down the wrong road and you say, man, I'm going the wrong direction. I must stop. Has that ever happened to you? Don't feel any way ashamed. You know, sometimes when we begin to pray, we are going down the wrong road. So the best thing to do is say, stop. 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 Stop, Sarah. Stop, Ken. Stop. What am I saying? The Lord said in his word, God is in heaven. Now I'm repeating scriptures, but it's there in the book. We are on the earth, so we must be careful what we utter out to the Almighty God. It is in the book. We must be careful what we say to the Almighty God. Because God is in heaven, we are on the earth, but there we must be careful what we say to the Almighty God. I never forget when I was at school, and there was a story about Alibaba and the 40 thieves. Did you remember that? And I was listening to Alibaba and the 40 thieves. And I'm thinking, uh, what is this story all about? And then when they actually came to, to, to the place, um, uh, you, you had to say a special word for the genie to work. Is that right? Yeah. What was that special word? Alibaba and the 40 thieves? No, he used to rub the lamp. Isn't that right? Yeah. What, what did he say? Open sesame? Yes. So he couldn't say open ses. He couldn't say open Sarah. He couldn't say open... What? He had to say open sesame. So if we are going to get the doors of heaven to open, if we're going to have the windows of heaven open, and pour down a blessing. We must approach the Almighty God in the right way. In the, absolutely, in the right key. We must recognize that in the name of Jesus, there is a open sesame. Praise the Lord. If you want doors open for you, it must be gone through in Jesus' name. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you. He says, be not rash with your mouth. Let not thine own heart be hasted to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou art on the earth. Therefore, let your words be few. It's wonderful there, brother uh, Adrian. And as we learn these things, let us apply them in Jesus' name. 
as I begin to learn a little bit more how to understand the computer, I once pressed the button for a formula to happen, and then I sort of got, went on my way, and they said, you got to apply it. There's a button you got to press to apply. And I had to go back and redo the whole thing again, and all the work that I had done, all the input that I had put. You know what, brethren? I lost it. And then I had to go back and do it again and press apply. It means to me that there are people in churches, there are people who believe in God and believe in the God of Abraham, believe in the God of Isaac, believe in the God of Jacob, and every day they get down on their knees and they pray to Jesus. If God will honor their prayers, I do not know. But all I know is that we must follow the word of God. And we have to be careful how we apply scripture. Because if the Lord said that we must do all in the name of Jesus, I have been to certain uh, assemblies. I have seen certain people pray and they haven't mentioned God once. Am I right? Have you ever heard that? Everything is Lord Jesus. Everything is Jesus. Everything, hear my prayer, Jesus. And when you finish, when they finish praying, you need a towel to wipe them down. I'm serious. I've seen some people pray, never mention the almighty God's name, and when they're done, they have to change their clothes. And I could say to you, like when it comes to the computer program, I've put in all that work and nothing has been applied. I believe today, if we do not follow the word of God to the letter, we could make a lot of noise, make a lot of noise. But in the end, the Almighty hasn't heard us because we have not asked him. We've prayed to Jesus. But the word has said we should not ask Jesus, but we must go through him. Is the mediator of the new covenant. Brethren, in the book of uh, St. John chapter 2, before we start on some scriptures that I gave you, brother, go to St. John chapter 2 for me, brother Adrian. And when you have an understanding that Jesus is the mediator, on the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. And uh, when you think about this story, when you, uh, they were called to the marriage. And you know what? The marriage was late in the night, in the cool. Because when marriages took place in Israel, the shout would go out, behold the bridegroom cometh go ye out to meet him and the time that the bridegroom came would be at midnight the bride was awaiting she had no idea when the groom would come so then the bride was always ready with her bridesmaids because the groom